Position versus displacement. Position refers to the location of an object. It's where that object is at, at one point in time. We want to be specific in physics. We need to say relative to some fixed reference point. Uh, the reference point is really important because otherwise, uh, how can we sort of commonly agree on what something like 100 kilometers uh, east might mean? Uh, we'll deal with that in a second. The unit for position is meters, or m. Any other distance unit can be used, but if you want to use position in formulas that combine with other physics formulas, we need it in meters. And the symbol we're going to use is a d with an arrow over top of it. Let me just try that again. A d with an arrow over the top of it. Um, so just to get at that point that I was saying about reference point, let's just make up a little example here. Here's a lake of some sort. And what if I told you, for example, that the campsite is 100 meters east? Well, that could be really misleading because imagine you started here and you went 100 meters east. It could be here. Or let's say you, you didn't have a really good measure of could be here. Or let's say you started here. You might think it's here. Right? We need to have a fixed reference point that this 100 meters east is referring to uh, from that location. So let's just say, for example, randomly that this was the fixed reference point. Then that would mean that the campsite is 100 meters east of that location. And as a result, we take away any, um, any uncertainty about uh, where specifically we're referring to. It's got to be relative 100 meters east of the uh, reference point and here I've labeled that as X. Um, this reference point can take on different meanings but we uh, or can take on different locations but usually within one question we try and keep one fixed reference point. Displacement on the other hand, is our change in position. So here, we could say that we had a position D1 of 0 and a final position D2 of 100 meters east. Our displacement in that situation, delta D, is 100 meters east, as in that's how far we traveled and in what direction we traveled. So it's a change in position. Common unit here is meters, but now we have some sort of direction as well. And a common symbol is delta D, and we put the arrow over top of it, and that indicates that this is a thing in physics that we're going to have direction associated with, and the word we use for that is a vector. That's a measurement with size and direction. Now again, we can imagine our scenario here. Here we are. Here we are in our lake. And we're going to start here, and we're going to go over to our campsite here. And so we travel our 100 meters east. I think that's what I've been doing up here. So let's say, what if, though, we have a, there's a secondary person in the lake, and they start here. This is them in their little canoe, right? And so they're starting from an initial position, a D1, that isn't zero like we've done over here, but let's just say it's something like 25 meters east of our fixed reference point, and they're only going to travel this distance. So looking at this scenario, I think we can come up with our formula for displacement as our change in position. And what we can see here is that they're still going to that same final position, 100 meters east, but now they're going to start, instead of from zero, from 25 meters east, and as a result, they're only going to have a displacement of 75 meters east. 
which again is sort of common sense from the, from the little diagram here. They are they're happier because they don't have to go as far. And um, I think it's sort of common sense from the diagram here. We can see if this is 25 and this total all the way here is 100, then this remainder here is 75. Um, so it seems like we're creating a lot of math and a lot of formal stuff associated with something that's you know fairly common sense if we make a little bit of a diagram out of it. But I, I urge you to keep in mind at this point that we're developing a system that is designed to um, that is designed to work in more complicated situations and a formal notation and we're trying to use simple situations to start learning that so that when we get to the harder ones we have a, a good foundation in that uh, in that notation in that approach um, let's just imagine a third situation here this is a lousy situation this is going to be person we'll call them C or something and this person has to start way back here with the canoe on their head. They're not even at the lake yet. Okay, there they are. They're carrying their canoe upside down. That's fun. Okay, and they have to carry. They start at a position all the way back here, D1 of 25 meters west. And so, in this problem or in this example that we've been considering so far, everybody's been east, everything's been east, all the directions are common. And what we have here is we have somebody who's stuck all the way out here in the west in comparison to our fixed reference point that we've, that we've declared. And so uh, they have to go, obviously, if we look at the situation, we don't need to do the formal math of it. We can see they have to go 25 meters just to get to the reference point and then an additional 100 meters so we kind of know for this person here that their total displacement is going to be uh, 125 meters east. But how can we handle that mathematically? Well, in this problem, we've been using east as our positive direction. I like to use the uh, short form here, positive. And so everything that's been east has been positive so how can we handle this 25 meters west well mathematically if we say that delta d is our d2 minus our d1 what we would say then is that our final position for this person once they get all the way over to the campsite which is located 100 meters east of our fixed reference point will be 100 meters east but they're coming from 25 meters west well, if east is the positive direction, then what that means is west is going to be negative. So we can change this 25 meters west into negative 25 meters east. And now what we have is a common direction for a question. See, everybody here is in the same direction, and now we can go ahead and do the math. 100 meters east. These two minuses combine to make positive. And so we get to our 125 meters east. Now hopefully you can see that that's just a sort of bunch of mathematical form there that just shows us what we knew already, that this person has to go a grand total all the way across the lake and the portage of 125 meters east. So again, if we want to represent these directions numerically, we call one positive the opposite direction as long as it's in a straight line with that is negative. How to deal with the situation, say, where you went north and then east. Um, we will deal with later. Not for a while, actually. Okay, let's look at a simple example here. We'll do an example, then we'll do another example, and then we'll uh, pause the video and um, pick it up in a different video. Person walks five meters north of a telephone. Uh, five meters north walks. Uh, I think what I wanted to say here is walks from five meters north of a telephone to 12 meters north of that telephone. 
determine the person's displacement. So what I meant here is that here's a telephone pole. They start at some position that is five meters north of it, and they're going to go to a final position, which is 12 meters north of it. So their change in position right here, and again, we don't need to do the math of this. We can see this directly. If this big guy is 12 and this little guy is 5, then their actual displacement here is going to be 7 meters. These are all. That's their delta D. This is their D2, and this is their D1. But let's just look at what that looks like mathematically so that we can get a little bit more practice with our, um, with our formula. D2. So they went from this initial position, 5 meters north, to this final position, 12 meters north. I'm going to just call north positive. Everything's positive in this question. So 12 meters north minus 5 meters north. And we can see their change in position then is 7 meters north. And so the mathematics and the diagram and the common sense of the whole situation all makes sense. Let's do one more of these. A car drives 100 kilometers from 100 kilometers west of the city to 50 kilometers east of the city, determine the total displacement. So here's the city, okay? And here's the car. I don't know why the car is bigger than the city, but it's a different issue for a different time. And they were 100 kilometers west that's the initial situation and they've gone to a final position of 50 kilometers east and so if we use our formula we would say that delta D or the displacement the change in our position is D2 minus D1, or our final position minus our initial position. Now, again, from our diagram, let's always keep a reference in common sense here. We can see that our delta D is 150 kilometers east before we even get started. But let's look at what that looks like numerically. So I've got 50 kilometers east minus 100 kilometers west. I'm going to call east my positive direction. In general, not always, but most of the time, unless there's a good reason not to, I'm going to consider the following. North, east, up, and forward to be positive. I'll try to remember to say what I'm doing, but I, that's the general rule that I'm going to follow. So what that means then is that this 50 kilometers east uh, is going to stay positive, but this 100 kilometers west is going to turn into a negative. So 50, two negatives make a positive. and I get my total displacement as I got from the common sense of the situation as 150 kilometers east. So that's how you can take two positions and get a displacement and hopefully that helps clear up the definition between the two things. You'll notice here that while I said that the standard unit for position and displacement was meters since everything's in kilometers I was able to leave it that way. That's fine until I start trying to combine that in other physics formulas. Uh, and we'll deal with that, obviously, in a later video.